listening to you. Welcome to Kakaki Social. I'm Rena and it's happy hour. A vessel said to be carrying crude oil and believed to have been stolen has been intercepted in Delta State by the Tanita Security Services. Tanita are men from Tompolo Security Company who got a contract from the federal government to protect oil pipelines. The 1,172 tons vessel carrying about 8,000, 1,000 barrels of crude was flying a Togolese flag and was being escorted by a Navy boat led by a senior naval commander. Tom Pelos men said they had to reach out to Nuhu Ribado, that's the new national security advisor, the chief of naval staff, Emmanuel Ogala, who mandated them to inspect the vessel when the naval officers cutting it appeared battery ready. When they could finally assess the vessel, they found out that it was authorized to carry product by the Navy but did not have any approval from Nigerian midstream and downstream petroleum regulatory authority that they should primarily have. All right, reacting to this on the space of social media is Jethro, who says, I have said it and I will say it again, that if security agents refuse to compromise with the oil thieves, stealing of our oil will stop. There is no way stolen oil cargo can escape from our territorial water without the knowledge of at least a team of security agents. Dominic Peter says, I arrest those naval officers escorting the ship. They have a lot to explain. But reminding us that it's still an allegation is uh, Michael who says, suspected to be stolen, please. And final reaction to that is coming from Johnny Bright who says, now Nigerian army will believe Asari Dokubo when he said that some naval and army officers are responsible for stealing crude. My problem now is that nothing will come out of it. Well, maybe we cannot be very sure yet. And um, Dangote Group has debunked claims on social media that the refinery will not begin refining of crude oil for domestic consumption and export until 2025. The authority maintains that the Dangote refinery and petrochemical in Ibejeleki, Lagos State, that was inaugurated by the then president, Muhammad Obuhari, a few days before he left office on May 29, 2023, will begin production by August 2023, which is about three months after the official commissioning of the facility. And away from that, the defense headquarters in Abuja says military action is the last option to be taken to reverse the situation in Niger Republic. However, it is not true that they are assembling their forces already for military action in the neighboring country. This is because, according to them, that they cannot proceed on operation in any of the member states of ECOWAS without the mandate from the authority of heads of states and government, which they are yet to get. Meanwhile, a video on the internet of a netizen wondering if Nigeria is ready for the content of the video, peradventure military action becomes the case. You see, huh? Niger don't go in force. They don't go invite Burkina Faso, Mali. See the truth now when they want to enter Niger. When you say you want to fight, you get me to fight, then now you don't feel I'm fighting security for Nigeria. Then they wait for you. People are fighting for their freedom. You say they're corrupt like Nigeria, when they, be, they look on to. Then they wait you now. Don't say if it's set, you will fly. All right, let's have some reactions to this now. Um, this user says there will be no orders from anywhere. Nigeria does not have the ability and capacity to fight that war. Dialogue is the solution. And Okaria says nothing would happen. The people that cannot control barefooted Fulani headsmen want to go fight a foreign country. For Ibere, he said, whoever is advising Tinubu to wade into Niger Republic does not have Nigeria's national security interests at heart. Well, it is not true that they've prepared or they are going, at least not yet, according to the intro to the report. And the wife of the Lagos State Governor, Joker Sonwoilu, is on the fire kindled by netizens. This is because while reacting to the State General Hospital elevator accident that caused the death of a medical doctor, Waire Diaso, she described it as a spiritual attack. <laughs> Yeah, I'll never forget.
The same day a helicopter crashed. The same day a leaf dropped down. How? How? All right, um, the medical officers there saying that they know how they can give details and it's something that really could have been presented or prevented. Now, although she condemned the tragedy and even cried at some point, but that she thought to bring on spirituality or religiosity for whatsoever reason instead of naming and shaming those that were negligent. All of those no longer matter to netizens as contained in their reactions. Daniel Rega, first to this, says a faulty elevator killed a medical practitioner, but someone whose wife thinks it's a spiritual attack. This isn't surprising considering what the Lagos state governor did during the NSAS protest, debunking and hiding a massacre. I pray the family of the deceased gets justice. Is justice ever enough even if you get it? For David, he says, sometimes I read this news and get infuriated. The wife of a state governor implying spiritual attacks on the health sector, despite several complaints about poor management in that hospital, especially that elevator. Honestly, shame not to catch our leaders. Asija says, when men refuse to take responsibility for their failure, they start blaming spirit. Of course, and um, your controversial um, Slim Smithy, he says, spiritual attack self don't suffer false allegations, just like the devil that we blame almost every time. And then, back to year 2020, this post was made, or uh, it was tweeted by medical um, guide on Twitter, and it says, fact, the doctor's quarter at General Hospital Lagos has 10 floors. It has a non-functional elevator and no running water. Doctors who live on the 10th floor, including pregnant women, climb the, state, the stairs multiple times daily. And he tagged Lagos State Ministry of Health, um, Professor Abayomi, the state governor and then NMA as well. But he came back to respond to that and he was asking under the tweet, are we going to wait till someone dies before things are done properly? Again, he tagged the um, um, Association of Resident Doctors and the deputy governor of that state, Hamzat. This was two years ago, 2020, but today it's a reality. Someone had to die for something to be fixed, something that could have just been done without uh, casualty. And then to another story, um, Basun Tijani is one of the nominees um, to be a prospective minister in the Federal Republic of Nigeria. But then we have old tweets of his dating back as far as 2019 when he was condemning um, the president, the sitting president now, Tinubu, so they've resurfaced on the internet. He was actually lambasting him. Let's see some of them before we take reactions. There are fears if this would affect his screening, but I'm not sure. So as far back as 23rd of July 2019, he tweeted that he was responding to someone who was criticizing um, the government, and he says, it is becoming the norm. Tinubu fed them that rubbish narrative with his seven power al Katen wisdom. Go invest your time and money into your business if you want to propagate such rubbish narrative. There are about four, so let's be fast with them. And again, he says, what is there to protect? He was talking about Buhari, and he says, Buhari isn't qualified and obviously not in the right place to lead a local government, let alone Nigeria. They should tell us what they know that we don't know. He went for that to say that the honest men and women around Buhari should help us understand why they will give their lives to a sick and disconnected man to rule Nigeria at all costs. Please explain how Buhari is qualified to lead a nation like Nigeria. Please help us understand. And that was now in April 2020. I mean, it continued like that up to last year. But let's have some reactions to this now. Adam's property says, but you are now appointed under the same man you put in to total condemnation. Another user says, the same Tinubu wanted you to reap where you did not sow. You all just hate him because or the zoo it's well just apologize openly and go to the senate for your screening Ireo. 
For Cheesy, he says nothing wrong in criticizing Bola Ahmed Tinubu. Tinubu needs some people outside the political circle that will always tell him, Mr. President, this won't fly, not yes men littered in his cabinet. Is this really going to affect him? Is he going to take back his words or something? He hasn't really deleted the tweets. They are still there. So let's see what happens. And if it turns out that um, Tijani is not certified by the Senate to be a minister of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, will Nigerians blame it on these tweets? We are not sure. So this picture should remind you of something, right? Mommy Gio, the famous Mommy Gio. There is a video I saw on Tuesday or so, but I decided to reserve it for today since, I mean, it's not news. It won't be, be still by today just because it's Friday. Let's take you back to that video now of Mommy Gio in our new sermon. The shirts we contact each other. Is that not so? Where is your heart? Chest. The moment, the location of the heart of that person touch your shirt, covenant has made. Heart to heart, life to life. Oh, jeez. Wow. Just with a simple hug. You have entered covenant like that. Well, good morning, Adora and um, Perry. Good morning, uh, Rana. Good morning. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <what a> <laughs> I, I, I mean, it's, it's a day of different stories and mm -hmm. different reactions. I, I come back to the one on Tijani's tweets, you know, and now he's been nominated yeah. for. And like you said, and I think from somebody on the social media said, the president doesn't need, you know.